Isaiah chapter 53. 2 Thessalonians, the 53rd book of the Bible. Who has believed our report? I have. April 1987. But too many do not. Too many reject the person of Isaiah 53. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Matthew 16, 17. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. Now, God knows it says, For he, he has no form of communist, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we may desire him. We're talking about an individual person here. And we already know it's the Lord Jesus Christ. But if you were to read this chapter to a Jewish person, if you were to open up this passage in the, in a, in the temple service, in the tabernacle, it would be read as the nation of Israel. And yet what is wrong with that is he. He. It's an individual, non-plural person. It can't be Israel. It's a singular form. And that's what would happen if you were to read this passage. To, you know, if you think I'm going to show the Lord Jesus Christ to a Jewish person, you read this, be aware. They will think it's them. For he has no form nor communists. All right, they will say, well, you know, who are we? We're little Jews, you know, and what's there about us? Well, there's a lot about them. Uh, there are some beautiful Jews. There are some Jews that have made covers of magazines and front pages of newspapers. There are some probably out there in pageants and stuff like that. There are Jews who are recognized by their very picture. For he has no form, he has no form nor common. He's, he's not anything of, of value as far as looks. And when we shall see him, him, not them, him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. So when he came, the first advent, there was nothing wonderful, marvelous about Jesus. He didn't have the beautiful, long, flowing hair as Absalom or Samson. And he had long hair. But it wasn't to his beauty. Absalom, you know, it was, he said he would pull it and make a big deal out of it. It'd be like, and there's a lot of people, when you read the gospel, who's that? That's Jesus. Some didn't even know who he was. And it wasn't a desire of the people because they gave him a cross. Very few received Christ all the way through his earthly ministry. He ended up with 11 men and women. And those 11 that were close by him, we're going to see in a moment, didn't believe him. Didn't expect to do what he told him he was going to do. He is despised. Try to go knocking on doors. Try to go handing somebody a gospel track. Try to have an open Bible with somebody about the Lord Jesus Christ. And see how great, how wonderful you are expected in their life. You ever have moments where... You should have spoke up for Christ, and you didn't. He is despised and rejected of men. Again, he's given a cross. They chose Barabbas over Jesus. He is rejected by people today. You see, you hand somebody a gospel tract, and they tear it up. In 2015... They're still rejecting Jesus Christ. A man of sorrow, though it's recorded that he wept twice. 
He watched his people from the eyes of man. And he knew their doom. He knew their final future. And that he came to change it all. And yet, it's recorded he's despised and rejected. Man, God is long-suffering. He's not willing that any should perish. Gave of himself. And acquainted with grief. That's the life of ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ grief he had nowhere to lay his head he had no house he had 12 men that were constantly bickering and questioning him and not believing him he had his Levitical order of priests that he set up turn on him he had his building that was built for his honor and glory cast out and we hid as if as it were our faces from him notice how Isaiah writes we now that's Israel's corporate Yet Romans chapter 10 says, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ with your heart and with your mouth. There is no shame. Hid their faces from him. He was despised. Rejected. Cursed. I forget which of the gospel says when, when the Sanhedrin had the Lord Jesus Christ in their power. That very night before he were to die, it says he, they just spoke such blasphemies and it's not even recorded what was said. And Jesus Christ, that final night and that next day of the Roman soldiers was vile wickedness. And we esteem him not. Who cares? I don't know. Here's my money back. And you don't even read what, what the disciples did that night. You don't even read what the disciples did that day. Come morning. I know Jay, I know Peter and John showed up there. And that's where Peter denies the Lord. Where were the rest? What were they thinking? He shows up in glory. Thomas. At least I see the print of the nails of his hands and feet. I won't believe. He despised. I mean, our our Savior, he, he died. He wasn't supposed to die. I mean, that's what they were thinking. Scripture said he was supposed to die. I mean, he was supposed to get rid of the Romans and kick some butt and we're going to win. That didn't happen. Maybe it was a failure. They were upset in the road to demons. I'm not demon. Yeah, did they? Did you hear the story? Of, you know, Jesus is dead. The women spoke of seeing the angels and confirming that he is alive, and we don't really believe it. They didn't even know the Lord Jesus Christ was amongst them. Sometimes in our own, our own life, we despise the Lord. Even as born-again, Bible-believing Christians. There are just some people, some instances that we do not bring him up. We despise him. Ought not be so. Surely he has borne our griefs. You ever take griefs to the Lord? You ever take what is bothering you to the Lord? He said, take of his yoke. Cast your cares upon him. He cares for you. Has he ever rejected you? Any time and all the time. He's, he's there 24 hours a day. 
seven days a week. He never sleeps. And he knows more than your spouse or your parents. Because he knows who you are. He knows the whole situation. Even where the part is. Listen, we're all wrong in situations. There's nothing to do right. Part of it is your fault. And Jesus, when we pray to him, bring our griefs, we'll bring it all out in truth. To help us. And carried our sorrows. There's been to the Lord with your sorrows, and your tears, your upsetness. He's carried them. The only thing I can think when you put this into the earthly ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, that cross being carried was sorrow. I, and you don't have to believe this, but I know, if I know Satan a little bit, and if I know God a little bit, I can assume that that cross, the wood they had, would have had splinters and make it even worse on the Lord Jesus Christ. And imagine carrying that cross, and maybe, and I may be wrong, but getting splinters along with the whips. Along with the blood gooing, with the muscles being aching and throbbing in pain. And be getting slivers upon the shoulder, not the fingers, the shoulder. But I could be wrong about the, about the slivers. Just another act of cruelty that I should receive. And we did esteem him stricken. And he was stricken. Now, Israel has been stricken. Israel has been attacked and conquered and attacked and conquered and destroyed and destroyed. And... But it says, he has bore our grief and carried our sorrows. What has the Jew done now? Their grief and sorrows is because of their rejection and their false idolatry and their worship of gods and not God. Their own sins have brought grief and sorrows. No Jew, except outside the Lord Jesus Christ, is taking care of me and my griefs and sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken. The Bible speaks about his back being ripped open. His beard being pulled out. Those thorns slushed. Upon his head with the reed. They used the reed for the thorns because they were so prickly. He used it like a, a, a hammer kind of thing to get those thorns down deep into his head. Smitten of God and affected. A man that rejects Jesus Christ today as his Savior is smitten of God even though the smitten has already happened. It's called hell. And you don't have to take the smitten of God because God has already put it on Jesus. But if you choose to do it your own way, whether you call it religion, atheism, agnosticism, science, whatever you want to do it, God will be glad to smite you. Hey, but it doesn't have to happen. Imagine somebody going through their entire life struggling with a little paycheck to pay their bills. Struggling, giving up things, having a hard time in tears trying to pay their bills. And the entire time at the same bank that that person's at, someone had put a check in their name that was written out to the X amount of how much the bills would be his entire life. And all he had to do was go down and sign it and, and get the money in his account, and all his bills would be paid off. And he wouldn't have to do a thing. But it sits there, un 
unused, unredeemed, as man will sit unused and unredeemed by Jesus Christ, and the of smit, the smitten is there for you, and not for yourself. It is stupidity that a man today will enter into hell when Christ has already taken the punishment. You're getting double jeopardy, which in this law of this land is illegal. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Zechariah 13.6 so, the Bible says when we take part of the Lord's Supper, we are to remember his body being broken. What are you to, to remember that? When his body was broken, it is for every one of your transgressions. Your transgressions against God is what broke the body the Lord Jesus Christ. He was bruised for our iniquities. The bruises that were upon his body. Much. It's because you are in iniquity. Your iniquity. Your transgressions. Was put into that broken body. Why was it whipped? Why was the hair pulled? Why was there pain? Because of your transgression and my iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. He was chastised so we will have peace. And yet on the cross he cries out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That is not peace. And at that moment, the transgressions and iniquities came upon him. The cup called sin. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. You know what God would like to do to a sinner? He'd like to beat the crap out of him. You get God with a sinner in the room, he'd like to just beat him. And yet, Jesus Christ stuck up to the plate, moved the sinner off to the side and said, hey, Father, do it to me. Father said, you, you, you know what you're saying? Yeah, I know what I'm saying. What you want to do to that sinner, you do to me, and that way he can, he can be ransomed. You know why God did not feel sorry? Because that cup that Jesus took was sin and the Almighty God can't stand sin so much and he angerifies him and he took it out on his son instead of me. You better realize when you take the Lord's Supper, you're supposed to remember the blood and the body broken and the blood that was spilt. You better remember everything that happened that, that night. From his arrest, and the next day he's standing before Pilate dripping in blood. You better remember as he carried that heavy cross up that hill, as he put his hands down for the nails. You better remember that. Because that is the source of our salvation. How about remembering this? How about you go to the dentist and tell him, no, no Novocaine, no gas. I'm just going to sit in the chair. And you drill as much as you have to drill. That's, that's just a little too. Not many can take that. Yet Christ had no medication, no gas, no morphine, no pills. He didn't call for no lawyer. He didn't call legions of angels. He 
and with his stripes. Why did he get the cat of nine tails across his back as furrows in the farmer's land? Not just a whip like Paul did. Paul survived. And Paul said that there were a certain amount of wax that you that he received certain amount of times. Why did they continually beat the Lord Jesus Christ and beat him to his skin? That we might be healed. And it says, are healed. In the present tense. You want to stand up with a bare back and have a cat of nine tails whip across you? Can you think that the cat of nine tails being whipped across your back being healing? That's an that despises that goes against nature having your back whipped that is going to heal. There's a preacher in America that was whipped for preaching, and he, he spent weeks on his hands and knees and was unable to move. Being whipped, a certain amount of whips, you're not going to get up and go play baseball afterwards. You ain't going to take a couple ID Pro for and the pain go away. And yeah, he carried the cross to Calvary. Why? To heal me. What's my disease? The wages of sin is death. That's my disease. I have a terminal condition called death. And Christ heal me. How? By being whipped. Now how does a Jew come up and say that if he was, and they were whipped, they were beaten, yeah, and Adolf Hitler and, and, and Nebuchadnezzar and all of them had a field day with them, but how can they be healed? So where do you get the Roman Catholic teaching? You know, in the Orient nations and all that, they go up and down the stairs on their knees with broken glass and, and they cut themselves and they do penance. Yet they die and go into hell unhealed because it's not the blood of Jesus Christ who is God, Acts 20, 28, the precious blood of the Lamb without spot. You need an unspotted, holy God blood to heal you. Not of works. This is not my works. We're five verses in this chapter. Do you think I can get up to chapter five alone and save myself? You want to see how much of a wuss I am? You put me in that dentist chair without no medication, and I'll show you how much of a wimp I am. I can't even take the aggravation of, of trouble at work. And you think I'm going to save my soul? You think I'm going to heal myself? With my blood? My blood is extra sweet. My blood is full of diabetes where one moment I'm too high, next moment I'm too low and I don't feel good. And they're saying now that my eyes are starting to leak, whatever it is, the diabetes thing is with the eyes. They're saying I got glaucoma. The doctor told me today, he says, everything rests upon your diabetes because everything in your body functions about your blood. He said, everywhere in your body is your blood. And somehow, some way, your diabetes, your sugar number, affects all the parts of the body. It's called circulation. 
and I'm going to save myself? You know, let me say the expression like this. If I ain't cursing, if I am, I'm sorry. If I have to save myself, I'd be damned. As a little boy, I used to shoplift. What does it cost for all the shoplifting I did? I have looked upon women like, whoo hoo. Jesus said that's an adultery. What is the price of an adultery? I have lied. What is, wh where does it say in the Bible how much a lie costs? How can I pay the bill when I don't know what the bill is? God hides the, hides the bill because it's been paid by Jesus. The price is Acts 20:28. 20, all we, me, all me, all we like sheep, bah, dumbest animal on earth. I'm told one time a guy told me, he says, if you got sheep in the past and you got a fence, if you move the gate, that sheep will look at that gate. Like, Ooh. He can go in and out of that gate and start life and just move it over one little spot. He'll look at it like, what do I do? You know, sheep are the only animals that cannot clean themselves. They need the shepherd. And they get all kinds of junk in their wool. And they're afraid. It says, yea, though I, uh, was, uh, he leads me by still waters. As a sheep, if you bring me the waters and they're moving, and, and it, that makes me afraid. Oh, oh. Gotta be still. I'm afraid. I'm an idiot. I'm a... Uh, like we, we like sheep have gone astray, gone our own way. Give it an opportunity, we're gone. We'll go anywhere and everywhere just to do it. We have turned everyone to his own way. We go our own way. Where Jesus said, I'm the way. And the Lord has laid on him. The iniquity of us all. Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. What sins that Jesus paid for? All of them. If you get somebody, oh, he won't forgive you, he forgive you of your sin. You need to pass this passage to them, and you need to pass the passage where John says, Behold, the Lamb of God would take away the sin, not sins. Why isn't it sins? Because God lumped it all into one. If he said sins, well, I'd go down the list and skip one. No, you don't skip nothing. It's all put into one bucket. Nope, it's all put into one cup. That cup that Jesus spoke about in the garden was, Father, I don't want to be sinned. I don't mind the death. We'll go through the death. But you want to charge me with sodomy? You want to put upon me murder? You want to put it with me bestiality? You want to charge me with not honoring my parents? You want to charge me as a liar? That's something else. And Satan had a field day with that with Pilate. Four times Pilate says, I find no fault in him. Okay, Jesus, get up and take away. Go. Go, Jesus. You don't have to take that cup now. The Roman government says you're innocent. Get up and go. No, i got to take that cup. You just said to your father a little while ago, last night, you said you didn't want that cup. I let, I told my man who said who bowed down his knees that I will worship you if you give me these nations. I have declared to him to say that you're innocent. You don't need to take that cup and go home. No, I must take that cup. That is the will of the Father. You know how many times, if you really read the story, how many times that, that 
from the time that Jesus was arrested to it is finished, how many times did Satan tried to stop him? Start mocking him, people. Come on. Mock him. Make fun of him. Spit upon him. Hit him harder. Make him carry that thing. Come on, thieves. Start mocking him. You guys all again, mock him. Tell him what a loser he is. Wait a minute. Don't you realize that we're in a condemnation? We deserve to be here. He's innocent. Oh, Lord. We... <laughs> That's a loss. That's a loss of Satan. Satan lost his soul that night. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all, everyone. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. You know, the, John says half the stuff wasn't even written about Jesus Christ. And his word, the volumes could not even be contained in the earth. What about the night he was he was arrested to it is finished? We're not even told if anybody went to him on the cross and, and did anything to him. Listen, they took the body of Jesus down, right? Wasn't the fact that was he's dead was good enough? That the soldier had to take a spear and pierce a dead body? Wasn't that enough? Wasn't the brutality enough that you had to stab the dead body of my Savior? Yet he opened not his mouth. He kept quiet. You get me that dentist chair, I guarantee you my mouth will be open wide. I don't mean for his fingers. He may not have fingers when he's done with me. No! Ah! No, God! Ah! You realize when he was whipped, he said nothing? Come on, Jesus, tell us who hit you. I'll tell you who hit me. You wait to the, to the great white throne judgment. Then I will answer who hit me. And Elias, step forward. Yes, Jesus. Who hit me? You hit me with your left hand on the left side of my cheek. Right after Dormus. And before Olympus. Ooh. Don't you know that? Your face was covered. Behold, the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the evil. In the good. I have declared to you your answer. I miss pull my beard. Huh? But here he kept quiet. He didn't call for a lawyer. He didn't call for a gun. Didn't call for a sword. He didn't call for revenge. Yeah, neither, you know. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. Behold the Lamb of God. You know how many lambs were brought to the temple from the time that Moses first built it and set it up to when Jesus said it was finished? You know when he died, they were they were sacrificing the lamb. He died at the moment the Passover was to, be, was to be applied. How many lambs in Israel? Yet the Bible speaks he was brought as a lamb. As a lamb. John 1, 29, Revelation 5, 6. As a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. And as a sheep before her shears is dumb and something about a female sheep won't bat or something I heard the story like that but I don't understand sheep so he and it's kind of weird because if it's a female sheep her shears her shears 
So he How do we go from a her to a he? Her shears is dumb. That don't mean duh. That means unable to speak. So he opened not his mouth. Now he answered a couple questions of Pilate. He stood before Herod. And he knew Herod wasn't really interested. Herod wanted a dog and pony show. He wanted to see if Jesus do some miracle. He couldn't do it. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to invite a bunch of kids and we're going to give them a show and all that. That's not what Jesus did. You want a dog and pony show, Mr. Herod? You ain't getting even a voice. Herod did not hear. What's that hymn? And the birds hushed their singing in the garden. That voice that the birds said, hey, shut up. That's our Lord God and Savior over there. Well, not Savior, but there he is. There's the one that created all those birds. Shh. Listen to me. Isn't that a great, great voice of our God and Savior? I'm not saying, I keep saying it. Our God and Creator. Listen to him, Mrs. Cardinal. Listen to him, Blue Jay. Sparrows, you can't fall to the ground without God knowing in your funeral. Listen to Jesus. Oh, what a wonderful voice. And yet Herod never heard it. He kept his mouth quiet. He was taken from prison. That body he was in was a prison. Imagine the glory of God and he was confined in this piece of rotten, rotten flesh. The one that spoke the universe to be, he's in this stupid little... What's wrong, Jesus? Oh, I'm getting a little tired. Oh. Don't mind me, boys. I'm going to fall asleep back to this boat. You got any problems, wake me, wake me up. I know you will. Oh. Jesus, go a little further away. I'm, I'm a little hungry right now. I mean, can you think about God in the flesh? Where did Jesus go? Oh, he stepped over to the bathroom a minute. You know? And who shall declare his generation? the Bible, us, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. For he was cut off out of the land of living. They crucified him. They killed him. How long had Jesus lived if they did not crucify him? He's God. He would live forever like Adam. Think about that. Had Christ not came to die for our sins, he'd be still in Jerusalem today, 2015 years old, and still going. And you think the Energizer Bunny is still going? Jesus would be still going. But he came to die. Who killed Jesus? No one did. He had to kill himself. He had to lay his life down because he's God. How can you kill God? Can you imagine 2015 years of Jesus walking around rebuking us all and then sending us off to hell? For the transgressions of my oh, women, cut off out of the land of the living for the transgressions of my people. So he died that we may have life. Was he stricken? Stricken. Beaten, bruised, tortured, pain, grief, sorrow, agony. Why? Because I'm a transgressor. Why did Jesus do it all? 
because I'm a transgressor. You caused the brutal beating and agonizing torture of God in the flesh. You're the reason why he came to the Jews first and then the Gentiles after. You put him on the cross. Even though you weren't there. For God so loved the world. He gave. What did he give? He gave his son. How did he give his son? He's been brutally treated. And tortured. Because God loves you. Had not God loved you. You would be brutally treated and abused and tortured and then cast into a burning fire forever. Except Christ paid for it. See, you're stupid to go to hell when it's already been paid. And he made his grave with the wicked. He died. He was buried in a in a graveyard, surrounded by dead men who were in hell. He died with two thieves. One on the left, one on the right. One of them was redeemed, not the other. You know why they were on those crosses? Because they were wicked. There was only one that wasn't wicked. With the rich, there's Joseph of Aramea. Look at that. Joseph's name shows up in Isaiah 53. With the, with the rich in his death, he was buried in a rich man's tomb. It wasn't even his own tomb. Because. Because, because, this chapter is so wonderful. He had done no violence. Neither was any deceit in his mouth. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Pilate declared him innocent. He had done no violence. He didn't try to overthrow the government. He didn't try to take over. Pilate found him innocent. Neither was any deceit found in his mouth. He, he had a pure, holy mouth. What did he get? And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. A death sentence because there was no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Wait a what? How can a Jew apply that to him? Oh, we died without cause. You read the history of Judah in the temple, how they had all these, these altars in there and they worshipped everywhere in every street corner at one point in time. You know how good and well the Jews were when Jesus came? They didn't even know who he was. They were blinded by God because of their unbelief. Yet, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. It made God happy. I am a please. I am satisfied. That's what it's saying. Stolly Hayward, you're a sinner above all sinners. Yes, I am. I'm the chief of the sinner. 
I ought to beat the crap out of you and send you to Lake. Yes, Lord, you ought to. But if I look at my son, who you have believed, yes, Lord, I have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And through everything that happened to my son, oh, Lord God, even most of it you didn't even write. True. And with the testimony of my son, the Lord Jesus Christ, as far as your death penalty and your sentence of hell, Mr. Hayward, I am pleased. The Lord, nothing, nothing, nothing was done to me. No, it was all done to my son. It was all done to my son. He has put him to grief. God put Jesus to grief. My God, my God. When thou shalt make his soul, can't be Israel, an offering for sin, the soul of God, Jesus Christ, the offering of my sin. The eternal being of Jesus Christ redeemed my eternal being, the soul. When that soul died and left the body of Jesus, as as it says with Rachel, and she gave birth, she gave birth to the, the son there, and as she died for her soul departed out of it. The soul of Jesus Christ went into hell and paid my death penalty. He shall see his seed. That is me, a born again Bible believing Christian. I am the seed of the Lord Jesus Christ. I can trace my salvation back to Jesus Christ. I can trace my new birth back to Jesus Christ. I am born of God by the gospel, by the testimony, by the work and the finished work of Jesus Christ. I am adopted in the family of God by Jesus, and I am a seed of the King. Not only am I a bride of Christ, I am his seed. He shall prolong his day, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand by pleasing God to be an offering. It becomes a pleasure of God to bless him. He shall see the travail of his soul. God saw Jesus. Burn in hell. As Jesus took my sins with his eternal part, the soul, deposited them in hell, God saw that and said, I am pleased. Oh, you wait for the pleasure. I'm going to treat you, son. You wait you get out of that hog mess down there and wait till you come home. I'm going to have the best robe. I'm going to get the fattest cat. And we're just going to keep on having a good time. And it never stops. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul. And shall be satisfied. How does God look upon a man to be satisfied when he sees that that man has finished in the work of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone, that your sins are placed upon his son. And when your sins are placed upon his son, they have already been to hell and have already been paid. God says, satisfied. By his knowledge, Shall my righteousness, Jesus Christ, I know I said righteousness, my righteousness, my righteousness is my righteous servant. That's what I'm trying to say. My righteousness is my righteous servant. That righteous servant of God is Jesus Christ.
That's my righteousness. That is the only way I can say, God, the reason why I want you to let me into heaven is because of Jesus Christ, your righteous servant. My righteousness rests upon him. Scary words. Ready? Justify many. What doesn't say all. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten. Christ died for everyone. Many will be justified. Not all. Few that will enter into the straight gate. Many will go on the way to destruction. That verse tells you right there already in the Old Testament. Not everyone will get saved. That verse will tell you that people will reject you on the street. People will reject you and knock on that door. People will take gospel tracts and throw them in your face. People will tell you, no, I don't want you, Jesus. Why? Because it said, justify many, not all. God already told you you're not going to get 100% results. So don't expect them. For he shall bear their iniquity. He bears the iniquity of me. So I'm justified by Christ. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great. He shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he has poured out his soul unto death. There are some people who say that Jesus didn't really die. He just passed out. And when, he, when, he, when they laid the body on that cold stone in the grave, and it, it, it revived them. What did it say? His soul unto death. You don't read your Bible very well. The soul of God. The body of God. The breath of God. Died. And... We ain't done yet. We mentioned Joseph of Aramea. And the, he yeah, and he was numbered with the transgressors. S -s 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 -s. Two of them. Two thieves. Again, and he bared the sin of many, not all. I could write a list of people I know personally have rejected the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. And probably will never receive Christ as their Savior. Wouldn't it be great when you open up the newspaper at the birth reports, you know, a son born to this, a daughter born, wouldn't it be great if every single one of those birth reports were to be saved? All of them, 100%. That'd be great, but it's not going to happen. Many is not all, and all will not be saved. There will be, and there are people in hell today because they have rejected Jesus Christ as their Savior. That's the plain, simple fact. It's horrible, but it's the truth. And made intercession for the transgressors. So Christ speaks on our behalf. Not only did he become our behalf as far as the wrath of God. Uh, we don't usually do this when the chapters, but let's go to John chapter 3 real quick. Let's see what John has to say about what we've read about. John chapter 3. I think this would close this chapter perfectly. John chapter 3, verse 36. See, either Christ will pay for your sins, or you will burn in your sins. Burning in your sins is the wrath of God. Look what, look what John says in John 3, 36. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. Christ became your sacrifice. Christ was whipped, bruised, and tortured for you. And you have life. That don't make sense. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but 
the wrath of God abiding on him. When we read in Isaiah 53, the wrath of God abiding upon him was Jesus Christ. If I receive him that received the wrath of God, I have life. If I don't, which I which I have, if somebody does not receive Christ, Christ received the wrath of God. I'm trying to think of a word. Christ took your wrath from God and it became vain. So God has to cast you into hell to pay for your own sin. Since you rejected the payment already. Go ahead, pay it off. You don't want my son? You don't want the payment I did? Go ahead. But I warn you, it'll be an awful long time for you to pay for your sin. You know how long it took Jesus to pay for my sins? Three days and three nights. When he came out of that grave and the angel said, he is not here, he is risen, paid in full. No other wrath. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, trust in the gospel, the finished work of Jesus Christ. Three days took care of it. Three days and three nights took care of it all. Now, if I'm going to pay for my own sins, I don't have life no more. I have the wrath of God abiding on me. What's abiding mean? It stays with me for all forever. And for as ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. So there is no menu on how much a sin costs. It costs your entire life. Except for Christ made the payment. 